Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropic Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Been sitting out here with my syngoniums, and I thought this might be a good plant to talk about. Someone hit me up on Instagram, asked me a question about them. I was like, oh yeah, wait, I was <laughs> I was planning on doing a video on these guys. And I'd like to go ahead and start off with just like general care, general facts, and get into the propagation, potting, and kind of like more of the eccentricities, the variables. All right, so for starters, syngonium podophyllum, also known as the air Arrowhead vine has a few other names to it. These get roughly three to six feet tall. They're a true tropical, zones 10 and up. They'll do just fine in low to medium light and they are high moisture lovers. These are an excellent house plant for a low light room. The Syngonium podophyllum, the arrowhead vine. There are a lot of different cultivars of the Syngonium podophyllum of these arrowhead vines. They come in different sizes and lots of different color patterns to their foliage. I have three of them. This one right here is the Maria, which has really nice, pinkish red undertones to the petioles to the stems and a really lovely dark foliage and then over here this one unfortunately wasn't labeled when i purchased it but i believe i'm not positive but i think that this one is the pink illusion i can't say for sure there are a lot of factors that influence the colors of the foliage which like i said i'll talk about with like the variables and eccentricities and then back here all the way back here in my filter under this palm frond that is a berry illusion syngonium podophyllum has a lighter color foliage and spotting on it. It's a little bit hard to see. I am growing this one in the aquaponics filter. They can grow in soil or in water. We'll go into that when we get into the potting. First, let's talk about lighting. Now, these are considered to be a low light plant. They're native to Mexico down to Brazil. They grow in the understories of the rainforest and any really tropical environment that has a heavy amount of overcast, or I should say really just foliage that creates a dappled light on them. Also where it is very humid. So yes, it is a low light plant. I have however found that indoors they tend to have a better form and better color when they get medium to bright indirect light. No direct sun, it's really not necessary for them just because it's likely that the foliage will scorch on them. So while you can put these in a room that doesn't get a lot of light, I would say that they do need bright indirect light for at least a couple hours a day. They can take low light for some time, but there's going to be differences in their growth habits. They'll tend to grow up and be a little bit more kind of stringy in appearance. The foliage will be further apart along the vine and the intensity of the color on that foliage is going to be much more minimal. Still pretty though. Arrowhead vine being the common name of this, it lets us know that this is a vining plant. You can even see here a little arrow root starting to pop out along this piece of stem. If this were potted up with something that had a moss covered pole on it, go ahead and put that pole like right in the center then that little aerial root that would grab right onto there and this plant would go ahead and climb right up there. Three to six feet high. I don't know if that's true if the Maria or the Pink Illusion. The White Butterfly is probably the most common cultivar that I've noticed with these Syngoniums and they do, they'll, they'll go ahead, they'll get three to six feet tall, no problem. <laughs> that was difficult to get out. Dumbling on my words, just got started. These arrowhead vines are moisture lovers. They like humidity, they like warmth. If there's any like extreme cold drafts or anything like that, they're not gonna be happy with it and they do not want their soil to dry out for very long at all. They're very thirsty. Went ahead and I let the Maria dry out for a little while so that I could go ahead and place it in a tray and show how quickly that will soak up that water, which is partially from the potting soil, but it also, it perks the plant right back up. So if it does dry out for a little while, they're somewhat forgiving as long as it's not really, really hot. In an average household setting, 68 to 74, somewhere in there, They'll be a little bit more forgiving if you do forget to water them. A useful tool when you're not sure is to have a chopstick handy, these nice wooden chopsticks. You can poke that right down into the soil. Wow, that is overexposed. Go ahead and give that some time to sit, let it soak up any moisture that's in there. Then you can pull it out and you can see the color difference between where the stick is dry versus where it's wet. If there's no color difference in the wood, then it needs to be watered. And also just use your finger, see if that surface is dry, then it needs to be watered. They're going to do best if you try to make sure to water them when that top inch of soil dries out, not any further than that. A moisture meter is also a great option to see if whether or not you need to water these plants. You just pop them into the top inch or so of soil, and then the little gauge will move around from dry to moist to wet. Not always the most accurate, but it does give kind of a general idea. Over time with an organic soil, you'll get to know your plants and you can tell whether or not it needs watering really just based off the color right here the soil's nice and dark if that were a lighter brown then be like oh okay you need water what about repotting if you notice that your plant is needing a lot of water all the time like you water it and water it and water it and it just is drying out very very quickly 
then it's a good time to go ahead and repot that plant. If you notice roots coming out the top of the soil or popping out these holes in the bottom of the pots, and that's also an indication it might be a good time to repot the plant. As a house plant, time of year is something to consider. These will do better if they're repotted when they're growing most actively, which is probably going to be like April through September. During the winter months, these really don't need as much water. They don't need to be fertilized very often, like, I mean, really much at all, especially if they're in a nice, rich, organic potting mix. But when they're growing actively during the active growing season, they can be fertilized monthly. Even every other week would be fine with an all-purpose fertilizer. Blending in an all-purpose continuous release fertilizer into that potting mix also helps, but a liquid will suffice just fine. And you can do both, just don't overdo it. Be careful. Too much fertilizing can result in kind of a wonky growth. It can burn the foliage, like you'll start to notice spots and patchiness and them maybe just not looking that great that's just from them getting excess nutrients oh i forgot i'm talking about potting why did i move on to fertilizing well fertilizing is covered potting like i said roots out the top roots out the bottom having to water very very frequently or if they've just filled out the entire pot and they look like they need to be repotted that happens then go ahead and bump them up to a new pot something about an inch to two inches on the outside diameter that's all they need and this one over here actually isn't potted in this i don't think these fare all that well in a terra terracotta or clay pot. You can see that that's just in its plastic nursery pot. I just sort of have it sitting in here. The reason I don't really like clay pots for these guys is because they tend to dry out very, very quickly and they are moisture lovers. That's why that's no in fact, these like moisture so much that they're one of the few plants that if you wanted to use one of the water wise or moisture retentive potting soils, I don't usually think it's a terrible idea. Oftentimes, I don't like those potting mixes because they can be problematic. They can hold in way too much moisture. But if you live in a really dry climate or maybe your AC or your heat just dries things out like crazy, that could be a way to go. Just make sure that the soil's not soggy. But a plastic or a glazed pot or some type of like composite fiberglass, something along those lines, it's going to keep the soil from drying out as quickly. And it's also important to remember when repotting that if the roots are swirled very, very, very tightly, like there's barely any soil left in there, to give the plant a nice good soak so that you can loosen those up a little bit. It'll make them more pliable. And if it looks fine just like this, then to just very lightly rub the edges so that the roots come out a little bit, make sure things aren't swirling too much around the bottom. You can just plop it into a new pot and fill in around that with some fresh soil. I also really like how these look when they're potted up with a totem or a moss covered pole. They'll grab onto that and they'll keep on climbing, which is another reason I'm not repotting mine right now because I don't have any of those poles. You just get them off of Amazon. They're fairly cheap. There is another potting method you can do with these. If maybe you just can't keep up with watering them, though, like I mentioned, in indoor conditions, they're fairly forgiving with being underwatered, as long as it's not something to make a habit out of. Go ahead, pull them out, and you can actually grow these in water. Personally, I think that's a little bit more high maintenance than just giving it a drink every now and then. But the first step to doing something like that would be to go ahead, remove all of the soil. Having a chopstick nifty is really useful for something like this, because you can get in and very slowly sort of feather out these fine roots that are more easy to break if you're just using your hands. Though uh, it is kind of time consuming. Since I have this out of its pot and I'm loosening those roots up, this is also a decent time to talk about propagation. I've seen people talk about propagating these guys just from leaf cuttings. I've never tried that before, so I don't really, I can't really say much about it. But these arrowhead vines, they multiply so so quickly, they just grow out and out and out, putting out new plants all the time. I think it seems a little unnecessary to go with leaf cuttings because you can just divide them out. In here, these are actually many, many separate plants. And if the soil's loose enough, you can normally just kind of pop them apart. You can use a nice sharp pair of scissors or clippers. Just want to make sure they're sanitary. If the plants rooted out more heavily and it's like really root bound and everything's kind of stuck together, then you can always just go in with a knife and go ahead and make nice clean cuts all the way through. You want to find kind of the separation between the different plants and to make sure that it, the piece you use does have some roots on it like i can see there's a pretty decent clump right here like i said i can just pull that apart or come in with the knife and go ahead and make a nice clean cut and then i would just take this division put it into an all-purpose potting mix make sure that it stays moist don't let it dry out since it needs to root out mending with something like espoma biotone can be really useful that puts all kinds of good things down into the soil help encourage root development if you have enough fine roots, you can also trim out these more thick roots, and that will encourage the plant to put out more fine roots, which are somewhat better for nutrient absorption. Keeping things humid during this time is kind of important also. 
may notice that it drops a few leaves. It's okay. Go ahead and cover this with some sort of plastic. You need to do that for a few weeks until you start to see new growth emerging. And once new growth starts emerging, then it's probably okay to go ahead and start fertilizing as well. I went in and I plopped this guy back into this normal nursery pot that it was in. I'm not ready to bump this into something more decorative at this time. I did want to go ahead and show, which I should have done as I was in the process. I just forgot. Sure not to plant them too deeply. You don't want the soil going up too high. You kind of want to maintain the soil line about where it already was. And I did leave this a little bit deeper. I didn't bring it up as high because they like to be watered so often. I just like kind of having an area that can act almost as a well. So when water pours in there, it doesn't just rush off the top and out the side. So it, I can pour it a little bit more heavily and have that soak through more efficiently because they thirsty. Like I mentioned, these can also be grown in water. Just give them a good swirl, get all the dirt off of them, maybe rinse it off in the sink. The main thing is that you don't want soil stuck to the roots. Sometimes you have to soak them for a while because that soil really can adhere on there. I don't think I'm going to get all of this off right now, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So I'll just go ahead and pretend I got all that soil off of those roots. I'd go take it to the sink and get like a nice shot of everything, but I'm surrounded by lights and literally getting out of this spot takes like five minutes. And I think everybody watching, you're smart enough to get the point. Here I have a glass jar or it could use a vase. That's really, it's just whatever looks good that can hold water. I fill it up with some gravel, can also use like the expanded clay pebbles. That would work really well, actually. I, just, I don't have any. It's marbles, you can really use anything you'd like. And lower this in, but not all the way. Just start filling in around there with more pebbles. Just keep on doing that until it's full. And it is good when doing this to keep in mind where you want the surface of the plant to be. If you have it too low and you need to raise the plant up a little bit higher, you see that can be a little bit too much pressure on the roots and could tear them up. And once that's full, just go in and simply fill it up with water. So I had mentioned that this is not particularly my favorite way to grow these, but if you're just propagating them, doing some fun things, or in a very, very, very arid environment, and this is just what works for you, or maybe you just want to have something that looks kind of fun around, totally works. But personally, I think it's a little bit more high maintenance and here's why. For me, over time, the water that's in here, it will get kind of stale and stagnant. With plants like a pothos, they are such nutrient hogs that they will filter out a lot of the gunk in the water that makes it sort of gross. But the syngonium's not as much. Also, depending on your water, it can be kind of nutrient voids, in which case you need to make sure to put like an aquatic plant fertilizer in there about once a month. They come in little tabs and you just sort of stick them down in there and that'll do the trick. Could always add some charcoal into this that will help keep things fresh, but the water really needs to be moving through the charcoal for it to have a huge impact, but it might help a little bit. So as far as the upkeep is concerned with something like this, for me with my tap water, I would end up having to take this to my sink about weekly and use my hand sort of like a strainer, tip it over the sink, pour out the dirty water and then refill it with clean water. I know that that doesn't sound very tasking, but to me, that's a little bit more difficult than just watering the plant. But it does look cool. I don't think it offers a lot of longevity, so it might just be something to do for a little while. Maybe you just wanna get some fresh roots going on a division, something like that. In which case, maybe this will work for you. And like, it's, it, it is kind of fun looking. If you were to use Leica, the nice thing about that, those expanded little clay balls, is that you can let the water drop even further down and they'll retain some moisture and re-release it and the roots will grow around it, probably adhere to it and that'll look really neat. Don't absorb some water as well, but it's not gonna be quite the same. Okay, so that's that. Like I said, it's kind of cute, but not necessarily my favorite way to do it. When it comes to keeping the humidity up using a tray pebble that has some stone in it, fill that up with water, set the pot right on top there, make sure the soil or the bottom of the pot isn't in contact with that water. That can be helpful with the surrounding humidity. I do mist a lot of my plants, but not all of them respond that well to it. And with these guys, I have noticed that missing them does often lead to some spots on the foliage, which could very well just be something with my tap water. And despite them being a moisture loving plant that likes a lot of humidity, indoors when I have had these inside, I haven't really had issues with the air being too dry. And my humidity where I live in the wintertime usually is around like 20 to 40 percent somewhere in there but if you notice that the outer perimeter of the foliage is starting to brown out getting kind of crispy that's usually an indication that they need more moisture in the air in which case the pebble tray or keeping them in just a nice wet room a bathroom fantastic do that yellowing foliage is often a sign they're getting too much water so that means just go ahead and cut back let them dry out a little bit i've had a lot of people ask me about pruning with really just houseplants in general. If you have yellowing foliage, it generally, there aren't many circumstances where it's going to hurt to just remove that. You can kind of see in here, there's a little leaf that, I guess it got smushed, I don't know what happened, but really these are pretty simple. You can get in as close as possible to the plant, 
and just pull it right out. Keeping dead foliage pruned out of houseplants is really just a good practice in general to help prevent disease and whatnot. And sometimes it'll attract in critters that like to chew up decaying foliage. So yeah, if there's foliage on them, these are so full. If you see leaves that just like aren't appealing to you, just go ahead and pull them right off, cut them off. All right, so now onto the variables. I've kind of breezed over them a little bit when talking about lighting and whatnot. Essentially, it's more about growth habit and growth form. These can become very long, linky, and stringy in really low light conditions, or if they aren't fertilized properly. Also, if they're not rotated quite right, if they're not receiving light evenly all around, rotating them probably every other week, even monthly can make a difference, but these will move very quickly towards light. So if you notice them stretching in a certain direction, go ahead and rotate that pot and it'll boop should go right back to where it needs to be. Lighting and temperature can really influence the shape and color of the foliage on these guys. Not necessarily in a bad way, but if you get a variety that is supposed to be kind of colorful and you're noticing like, hey, it's just kind of green, it's just sort of blah, then that probably means you just need to bump up the lighting. I have found the arrowhead vines to be a fairly easy to grow plant and I haven't really had to worry about, like I admit, called them like the eccentricities of the plant. Hasn't been much of an issue. Even when I used to grow them inside and the humidity was a lot lower, they didn't really fuss over it. But 20 to 40% is still much more humid than say like Wyoming or Arizona. That, that's very dry air. And that's when maybe planting them up with the water or using a moisture retentive soil or putting them on the pebble tray, keeping them just in an overall humid room that can be really helpful. I'm actually really excited for the temperatures to warm up. I, that's why I haven't repotted them. One, because I want to pot this up in something that's not clay. I want something that's gonna hold in a little bit more moisture. Overall, just not ready to do it. And I'd rather do it when I'm moving my plants outside. I'm inside of my grow space right now. And I want to repot them when they're about to take off or right after they've taken off and be like, oh my goodness, it's warm. It's nice out. I'm gonna start growing like crazy. With warm conditions and regular watering, they'll grow fairly quickly. And I'm also interested to see how the foliage changes when I move them outside where they're going to get natural light. I'll let them get filtered light in the morning, just a few hours. At least similar to what you would do for a, like a fern, or I mean, there are sun loving ferns. I think you know what I mean, right? Filtered dappled light. And when I do pot these up into something with, like I said, I'll use a totem, a moss covered pole. I'll be sure to go ahead and record that. It'll either be in a vlog or I'll do a separate video on it. It's really not super complex with these plants. That's one of the reasons I think they're pretty cool and a nice fun plant to have around the house. Do you guys have any favorite varieties with these arrowhead vines? Let me know, comment down below, or you can hit me up on my social media, which is also down in the description. I use Instagram far more than anything else. So if you follow me, I'll follow you back. It's a lot of fun seeing everybody's pictures and kind of nerding out together on there. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, hit that thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel. I notice it and I really appreciate it, so thank you. I also upload multiple times a week, so you can subscribe, hit that notification bell, that way you know when new videos come out. I'm pretty nuts about how beautiful the stems are on this Maria. They're pretty in here also on the one that I said might be Pink Bliss, but not, not, not as much. Nowhere near as colorful and beautiful as over here. Wow. I hope everybody's doing great, having an excellent life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.